Hi everyone, let me just give you a real quick intro and then we'll jump right into the video. So this video is part one of the Internet Mysteries Iceberg. This iceberg has eight tiers and I'll cover four tiers in this video and four in the next completing the iceberg. And yeah, that's all. Let's now start the video with tier one's entry number one, Elisa Lam. Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian student who was found dead in a water tank atop the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles on February 19th, 2013. Her disappearance had been widely publicized after she went missing on January 31st, 2013, during a solo trip across California. The most chilling aspect of this case is the surveillance footage from the hotel's elevator, recorded on the day she vanished. In the video, Lam is seen behaving erratically. She enters the elevator and presses multiple buttons, peeks out of the elevator as if hiding from someone, and makes unusual hand gestures. Her peculiar behavior and the fact that the elevator doors remain open throughout her time in the frame fueled wild speculation and theories. After guests had complained about low water pressure and odd-tasting water, maintenance workers checked the tanks and found her decomposing body. The circumstances of her death were puzzling because accessing the water tanks required passing through several locked and alarmed doors, and the tanks themselves were difficult to reach and covered. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office ruled her death as an accidental drowning, stating that Lam had bipolar disorder, which may have contributed to her death. However, the autopsy report did not find any drugs or alcohol in her system that could explain her bizarre behavior. This case has given rise to numerous theories. Some believe Lam was under the influence of hallucinogens or experiencing a severe psychotic episode. Others speculate about foul play suggesting she might have been murdered and then placed in the tank. Paranormal enthusiasts draw connections between her death and the Cecil Hotel's notorious history, including its association with other mysterious deaths and infamous serial killers like Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterweger. The Elisa Lamb case continues to haunt and fascinate the public, not only because of the eerie elevator footage and the bizarre circumstances of her death, but also due to the unanswered questions that linger. In 1981, an arcade game by this name allegedly surfaced in Portland, Oregon. Reports claimed it was extraordinarily addictive, drawing massive crowds and forming long lines outside arcades. Its supposed popularity led to heated arguments and even physical altercations over whose turn it was to play. The story further suggests that Polybius had psychoactive effects embedded within it, making it more enthralling than other games of the era. These effects were rumored to cause seizures, memory loss, hallucinations, insomnia, and night terrors in players. Additionally, mysterious men in black suits were said to frequent the arcades, gathering data from the game for undisclosed reasons. Strangely, just a month after its debut, Polybius vanished from all arcades in Portland without a trace. Despite the compelling narrative, there is no solid evidence to confirm Polybius ever existed. Many believe the myth originated from real events in the 1980s when teenagers experienced illnesses from prolonged exposure to bright arcade screens. This real phenomenon likely fueled the creation of the Polybius legend. The tale has inspired fans to develop their own versions of the game, though none are the original from the 1980s. Some individuals even claim to have played Polybius back then, but they are probably confusing it with other games and attributing their memories to this mythical title. Over time, the Polybius story has woven itself into urban folklore, merging elements of reality and fiction. WebDriver Torso is a YouTube channel that ignited widespread curiosity and speculation since its inception in 2013. Characterized by thousands of short videos featuring basic geometric shapes and tones, the channel drew significant attention in 2014 due to its peculiar nature and the massive volume of uploads over 624,000 videos to date. The channel's content, mostly repetitive and enigmatic, includes one particularly notable video, a brief clip of the Eiffel Tower illuminated at night. In this video, the person filming briefly captures their computer screen, which is displaying the WebDriver Torso Facebook page. For quite some time, wild theories surrounded WebDriver Torso. Some speculated it was an attempt at alien communication, while others thought it might be linked to the mysterious Cicada 3301 puzzle. However, Google eventually put these theories to rest by revealing that WebDriver Torso is actually a test channel used by YouTube. The channel serves as a tool for video quality control, helping YouTube assess how well videos retain their quality from pre-upload to post-upload. 
The distinct colors and sounds in the videos facilitate these tests. While not an alien message or a secret puzzle, WebDriver Torso remains a fascinating example of how something ordinary can evolve into an internet mystery. Cicada 3301 the cryptic internet mystery known as Cicada 3301 emerged in January 2012 through a post on 4chan. This post targeted highly intelligent individuals, presenting a hidden message within an image and inviting them to solve a series of intricate puzzles. These puzzles demanded advanced knowledge in cryptography, steganography, and other disciplines. The journey started with decoding the image, which led to a sequence of clues involving riddles, books, and websites. These clues extended beyond the digital world, directing solvers to physical locations globally. At these locations, participants discovered posters with a cicada image and QR codes, which, when scanned, directed them to a hidden Tor website. For three consecutive years, new puzzles appeared annually, challenging the most brilliant minds. Upon solving a puzzle, the cicada group would go silent until the following year's challenge emerged. The complexity and global reach of the clues suggested a highly organized and well-funded operation, surpassing the capabilities of mere pranksters. A notable aspect of Cicada 3301 is the mystery surrounding its purpose and the identities of those involved. The group claimed to fight against censorship and advocate for privacy as an international collective, but their true intentions remain speculative. Some believe they aim to recruit skilled individuals for noble causes, while others suspect more sinister motives, like forming a secret society or cult. Despite the dedication of internet sleuths who solved the puzzles, the overarching enigma of Cicada 3301 persists. The identities of the organizers and the true purpose of the puzzles remain shrouded in mystery. The Max Headroom Incident Max Headroom is a fictional character from the 1980s, portrayed by actor Matt Frewer. The character was designed to look like a computer-generated TV host, but it was actually Frewer in prosthetics and a suit, with special effects making him appear CGI. On November 22, 1987, two television stations in Chicago were hijacked by someone wearing a Max Headroom mask and using a similar background to the show. The first hijack occurred on WGN-TV during the 9 p.m. news, lasting about 25 seconds before being cut off. A couple of hours later, a second hijack happened on PBS station WTTW during an episode of Doctor Who. This interruption lasted for about 90 seconds because no one was monitoring the station at the time. During the second hijack, the masked individual made strange and vulgar comments. The incident took a bizarre turn when the person exposed their bare behind and a woman off-screen, whose face was not visible, lightly spanked him with a fly swatter. It was clearly intended as a prank, and while some found it humorous, the TV stations and the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, did not. The FCC launched an investigation to identify and prosecute the hijackers, but was unsuccessful. The person responsible for the hijack was meticulous and managed to avoid capture. Despite the statute of limitations on this crime expiring long ago, no one has ever come forward to claim responsibility. One popular theory is that the hijacker was either an employee or former employee of the stations, familiar with the technical aspects needed to pull off the stunt. Regardless, the true identity of the hijacker remains a mystery. In 2011, a mysterious Reddit phenomenon began with the creation of a subreddit and an account named A858. This account started posting cryptic codes without any explanation, and the subreddit was restricted allowing only a select few to interact with the posts. This led other Reddit users to create a separate subreddit, r a858, to discuss and attempt to decipher the codes. Out of the thousands of codes posted, only a few have been deciphered, with one notable solution revealing an image of Stonehenge. In 2015, an account linked to the project's creators hosted an Ask Me Anything on the r a 858 subreddit, but it was conducted entirely in code and provided little useful information. The organizers admitted that they couldn't disclose the project's purpose, deepening the mystery. Shortly after the AMA, it was announced that the project had ended. A few weeks later, some users claimed to have contacted the project's owner, who disclosed that he was paid by someone to post these codes on Reddit. However, he himself did not know the true purpose of the project. To this day, the origin and purpose of the A858 project remain a mystery. Thousands of codes are still unsolved, and although the subreddit is no longer active, 
the Enigma continues to captivate and puzzle the Reddit community. Unfavorable Semicircle, a YouTube channel that began uploading in 2015. The channel's content was highly unusual, extremely short videos featuring various visuals, often accompanied by a man's voice reciting letters and numbers. The sheer volume and rapid pace of these uploads drew significant attention, even catching the eye of the BBC, which reported on the phenomenon. However, in a bizarre turn of events, the channel was suspended by YouTube in February 2016, shortly after the BBC coverage. The suspension was due to a violation of YouTube's terms of service, likely because the massive number of videos was deemed spam. The suspension of unfavorable semicircle only fueled public curiosity further. Numerous theories have emerged about the nature of unfavorable semicircle. Some speculate it was an alternate reality game that never officially revealed itself as such. Others suggest it could have been the work of someone with mental health issues. Despite the best efforts of many internet sleuths, the true purpose and origin of the channel remain unresolved. The Solway Firth Spaceman Mystery, also known as the Cumberland Spaceman, is a famous unexplained photograph taken on May 23, 1964, by Jim Templeton, a fireman from Carlisle, Cumberland, during a family outing to Bergmarsh near the Solway Firth in England. Templeton captured three photographs of his five-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, sitting on the grass, but when the film was developed, one image showed a figure that appeared to be a spaceman or astronaut standing behind her, though no one had been there at the time. The photo gained significant media attention, and Kodak confirmed it had not been tampered with. Various theories emerged, including double exposure, a hoax, and an optical illusion, with a later suggestion that the spaceman was actually Templeton's wife, Annie, who had inadvertently walked into the shot wearing a light blue dress that appeared white due to overexposure. The mystery deepened when Templeton reported being visited by two men in dark suits, often referred to as Men in Black, who questioned him about the photo and took him to the site but provided no identification. Additionally, a connection was made to a missile launch at the Woomera Test Range in South Australia, where engineers claimed to have seen similar figures, leading to an aborted test. Despite modern analysis supporting the theory that the spaceman was likely Templeton's wife, the Solway Firth Spaceman continues to be a captivating subject in discussions of unexplained phenomena and internet mysteries. BlankRoomSoup.avi Blank Room Soup is a well-known and unsettling internet mystery. The video clips feature a man in a plain room being fed soup by figures wearing large-headed Ray Ray costumes. These costumes were created by Raymond S. Percy, an animator and performance artist. According to Percy, Two of his Ray Ray costumes were stolen from his trailer after a performance. Later, he received an email with the eerie videos and shared them online, hoping to find out more about their origin. This kicked off a wave of speculation and wild theories. One of the most infamous theories suggests that the man in the video and his wife were kidnapped, with the wife made into soup, which the man was forced to eat. This gruesome story likely originated from online horror fiction but gained traction among viewers. It's possible that Percy, a performance artist, might have created these videos as part of an elaborate hoax or publicity stunt. The This Man mystery centers around a peculiar phenomenon that began in 2008 with the emergence of a website displaying a creepy sketch of a smiling man. Posters featuring the sketch appeared in various locations with the caption, Ever dream this man? The campaign claimed that numerous unrelated individuals had reported seeing this man in their dreams since as early as 2006. This purported collective experience sparked widespread intrigue, and many people began to assert that they had indeed seen this man in their dreams. However, it was later revealed to be a hoax orchestrated by Andrea Nutella, a sociologist and marketer, as part of a viral guerrilla marketing campaign for his ad agency. The sketch of the man was inspired by a photo of Nutella's father from his youth. Nutella's aim was to fabricate an urban legend and study the creation of false collective memories, exploring how people could be led to believe they had shared a common dream experience simply through suggestion. A Day with SpongeBob SquarePants was purportedly a movie that never actually came into existence. It is said that a full script was written, but doubts arose when the promotional poster for the movie was scrutinized. People noticed that the child featured on the poster was just a stock photo, not an actual actor from the supposed film. The movie was intended to be a mockumentary produced by a company called Regal Films. 
According to Regal Films, the plot of the movie involved SpongeBob living above ground like a Hollywood superstar. Fearing SpongeBob was becoming outdated, his boss organized a contest called Spend a Day with SpongeBob. The contest generated massive excitement, and a boy named Seth won. However, the day with SpongeBob turned into a chaotic adventure far from what Seth had anticipated. Despite the detailed plot and the existence of a promotional poster, the film never materialized. It's believed that the project was in the planning stages, but never received the necessary backing. There are claims that parts of the script still exist somewhere. Adding another layer to this mystery is a conspiracy theory about Regal Films. Allegedly, the company set up Kickstarter campaigns for this and other movies to fund their production. However, these campaigns never seem to result in completed films. The Most Mysterious Song on the Internet In the mid-1980s, a teenager named Darius S. recorded a mysterious song off a German radio station called NDRF using a cassette recorder. Darius, an amateur DJ, was compiling a mixtape of his favorite songs when he captured this track, which remains unidentified in terms of its writer, performer, and producer. Known by various titles derived from its hard-to-decipher lyrics, it is often referred to as Like the Wind. Identifying songs in the 1980s posed a significant challenge for music lovers, unlike today, where apps and search engines make it easy. Many tunes like this one remained unknown unless the radio DJ provided details. In 2004, Darius's older sister, Lydia, gave him a web domain for his birthday, which he used to create a site dedicated to uncovering more about the enigmatic song. This effort marked the song's first online presence. In 2017, Deadwax Records uploaded a snippet of the track to their YouTube channel. Gabriel Pinson, a friend of the label's owner, became fascinated with the song's mystery and began spreading it online, particularly on YouTube and Reddit. By 2019, a subreddit called r slash the mysterious song was established, attracting a community of internet sleuths eager to solve the puzzle. Despite numerous leads and ongoing discussions, the song's origins remain unknown. The subreddit remains active, and there is hope that the mystery will eventually be solved. Mysterious sky sounds. Now let's discuss the curious phenomenon of strange sounds emanating from the sky, often called sky trumpets. This mysterious occurrence has been recorded by people around the globe, featuring eerie and unexplained noises. I'll play some clips so you can hear for yourself. Descriptions of these sounds vary widely. Some liken them to the rumbling of a train or the roar of a beast. These sounds have prompted multiple 911 calls from frightened individuals who had no idea what was happening. Despite being frequently labeled as solved, the mystery remains unresolved for many. Various theories have been proposed, but none are conclusively proven. One notable theory attributes the sounds to very low-level earthquakes that, while imperceptible in terms of ground movement, produce audible noises. Another theory suggests that these noises are due to gas escaping from the earth, causing loud rumbling sounds because of the gas's volume. Other potential explanations include meteor activity, volcanic eruptions, 
and even man-made sources like trains or military weapon tests. As with many unexplained phenomena, there's speculation about extraterrestrial involvement. Some religious individuals interpret the sounds as divine messages, believing that God is causing the earth to rumble out of anger. While some videos of these sky sounds have been exposed as hoaxes, many appear authentic, making this a genuinely intriguing phenomenon. John Teeter's story, an intriguing internet enigma, emerged between 2000 and 2001 when he began posting on online forums. He introduced himself as a time traveler from 2036 on a military mission. Titor provided detailed descriptions of his time machine, which lent some credibility to his claims. He mentioned traveling back to 1975 to retrieve an IBM 5100 computer for a future project and making a stop in 2001 to visit his family on his way back to 2036. To support his claims, Titor made several predictions, the most notable being a devastating civil war in the United States, leading to a global conflict by 2015 with billions of casualties. While he made other predictions, this one was particularly alarming. Titor conveniently explained that the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics, which suggests that multiple parallel universes exist where every possible outcome of an event occurs in a different universe, was proven true in the future. This meant that if his predictions did not come to pass, it was simply because he was from a different timeline, thus making his claims unfalsifiable and allowing him to assert his accuracy regardless of the actual outcome. The mystery gained significant attention, prompting a TV show to hire a private investigator to trace Titor's IP address. The investigation led to the John Titor Foundation, located near the IP address with a P.O. box in Florida. This P.O. box was linked to Larry Haber, an entertainment lawyer whose brother was a computer scientist. This connection sparked speculation that the brothers might have concocted the hoax together, the computer scientist providing the technical details and the lawyer developing the storyline. While not definitively proven, this theory has convinced many people. Despite whether the Haber brothers were behind the hoax, the majority now view the John Teeter story as debunked. The Moravian Parallax Denigrate To understand this phenomenon, it's important to know about Usenet, an early social media platform developed in 1979 and launched in 1980. Usenet functioned similarly to a primitive version of Reddit, allowing users to post messages and share files. In 1996, Usenet users were perplexed by a flood of strange messages, all featuring the cryptic phrase, Moravian Parallax Denigrate. This peculiar phrase fueled numerous conspiracy theories, especially when it was linked to Susan Lindauer, a known CIA operative. The association with Lindauer led to rampant speculation. Some believed she was using Usenet to transmit coded messages or to disrupt the platform. However, an investigation by the Daily Dot ultimately debunked these theories. They discovered that the bizarre messages were unrelated to Lindauer or the CIA. Instead, it turned out to be one of the earliest instances of spam, a concept that was relatively new to internet users at the time. Thus, Moravian Parallax Denigrate was not a covert government operation, but one of the first cases of internet trolling. The Charlie Chaplin time traveler mystery stems from a peculiar scene in the 1928 film The Circus, directed by and starring Charlie Chaplin. In a behind-the-scenes clip from the film's premiere, a woman appears to be holding an object to her ear and speaking into it while walking past the camera. This object, which resembles a modern mobile phone, sparked intense speculation and debate when the footage was discovered and posted online in 2010. The idea that the woman might be a time traveler quickly gained traction, as it seemed implausible that such a device could exist in the 1920s. Various theories were proposed to explain the anomaly. Some suggested that the woman could be using an early hearing aid, as these devices did exist at the time, though they were large and cumbersome compared to the sleek, handheld object she appears to be using. Others posited more fantastical explanations, including the possibility of time travel. Skeptics argue that the most likely explanation is a combination of the woman shielding her face from the camera and holding a mundane object like an ear trumpet or even a simple piece of cloth. The 9-11 prediction in media refers to the phenomenon where various films, TV shows, and other media produced before the September 11, 2001 terror attacks appear to contain references or uncanny similarities to the events of that day. 
These seemingly prophetic references have become a subject of fascination and conspiracy theories. One of the most famous examples is an episode of The Simpsons from 1997 titled The City of New York vs. Homer Simpson, which shows a brochure featuring the number 9 next to the Twin Towers, forming an eerie 9-11 visual. Another notable instance is in the 1999 film The Matrix, where Neo's passport expires on September 11, 2001. Additionally, the pilot episode of The Lone Gunman, a spin-off of The X-Files, which aired in March 2001, features a storyline about a plot to crash a hijacked plane into the World Trade Center. These examples, along with many others, have led to intense speculation and debate. Some people believe these instances are mere coincidences, a result of the human tendency to find patterns and meanings in random events. Others, however, suggest that they might be evidence of foreknowledge, or even predictive programming, a theory that media is used to prepare the public for future events. Cursed Kleenex commercial refers to a bizarre Japanese television advertisement from the 1980s that has become the subject of various urban legends and internet mysteries. The ad features a woman dressed in white and a child dressed as a red demon, sitting on hay and staring into the camera while an eerie version of the German folk song, It's a Fine Day, plays in the background. The unsettling atmosphere and the peculiar choice of music led to rumors that the commercial was cursed. According to the legends, anyone who watched the ad experienced a series of unfortunate events, such as sudden illnesses, accidents, or even death. Additionally, it was said that the actress in the commercial went mad or died under mysterious circumstances. However, this is not true. Her name is Kiko Matsuzaka, and she's still acting. The Burger King foot lettuce mystery originates from a notorious internet meme based on a real incident. In 2012, a photo was posted on 4chan's b-board showing a Burger King employee standing in two containers of lettuce with the caption, this is the lettuce you eat at Burger King. The image quickly went viral, sparking outrage over the unsanitary behavior. Internet sleuths managed to trace the photo to a specific Burger King location by analyzing the metadata, leading to the swift firing of the employee involved. The incident was later immortalized in a 2017 YouTube video by user Top15s, who narrated the story in a distinct monotone voice, contributing to the meme's popularity. The Evil Farming Game is an internet mystery that was sparked in 2016 by a Reddit user named Sparta2113, who posted in the tip of my joystick subreddit about a peculiar and dark farming game he recalled playing in the early 2000s. This game, unlike typical farming simulators, had a sinister twist. The player had to kill their wife and then manage their farm while hiding her body from the police and townspeople. The post gained significant traction, leading to the creation of Discord servers and subreddits dedicated to uncovering the elusive game. Despite the community's efforts, the game's identity remained a mystery until a breakthrough came from a Discord user who shared a video clip from a streamer known as Vinny. In this clip, Vinny jokingly described a twisted version of Harvest Moon, where the player must hide a corpse while managing their farm, eerily similar to the game Sparta described. Upon seeing the clip, Sparta213 realized that his memory of the game likely stemmed from falling asleep to Vinny's streams, where the idea was suggested as a joke. This resolution brought an end to the mystery, demonstrating how easily internet rumors can spiral from innocuous origins. The Publius Enigma is a fascinating internet mystery connected to Pink Floyd and their 1994 album, The Division Bell. The Enigma began during the album's promotional tour when an anonymous individual named Publius posted on an online forum suggesting that the album contained a, a riddle for fans to solve. This claim gained credibility when, during a concert in New Jersey, the stage light spelled out the words Enigma Publius, and similar messages appeared during a television show in London. This led many to believe that Publius was a legitimate source with inside information. Years later, the band confirmed that the Publius Enigma was a marketing campaign orchestrated by their record label, EMI Records. Despite this revelation, the specifics of the puzzle were never fully disclosed or solved. It remains unclear whether there was an actual solution, or if the Enigma was simply a series of random clues designed to generate intrigue and publicity. According to one band member, the intended prize for solving the puzzle was philanthropic in nature, such as planting trees around the world, but no one ever claimed it. Although the mystery was partially resolved by identifying it as a publicity stunt, 
the details of the puzzle itself remain elusive, leaving fans to wonder whether there was ever a genuine riddle to solve. Grave Robbing for Morons The Grave Robbing for Morons video is a disturbing and mysterious piece of internet lore that has circulated among online horror and true crime communities. The video, which appears to be a low-quality VHS recording from the 1980s or early 1990s, features a young man who seems to be a teenager or in his early 20s, giving a tutorial on how to rob graves. In the video, the young man referred to as Anthony speaks directly to the camera, explaining the process of grave robbing in graphic detail. He talks about how to locate graves, dig them up, and handle the bodies. He even offers advice on avoiding detection and what to do with the stolen bones and artifacts. Throughout the video, he displays a cavalier and unsettling attitude, making the entire presentation feel eerily authentic. One of the most striking aspects of the video is Anthony's demeanor. He appears somewhat disheveled with an erratic speaking style that alternates between serious instruction and bizarre, almost incoherent tangents. At one point, he even shows off a skull claiming it to be a genuine human skull that he had exhumed. This macabre prop adds a chilling sense of realism to his already disturbing monologue. Some believe it is a genuine instructional video made by a real grave robber, while others speculate it might be a twisted prank or a piece of underground shock art meant to disturb and provoke. Despite numerous discussions and analyses by internet sleuths, the true identity of Anthony and the video's creators remain unknown. The Wyoming Incident is an internet mystery that revolves around a purported television hijacking in Wyoming in 2007. According to the legend, viewers watching a local broadcast were suddenly confronted with a bizarre and unsettling six-minute video. This video included eerie music, distorted faces, and cryptic messages that flashed on the screen. Those who watched it were rumored to experience severe physical and psychological symptoms such as hallucinations, vomiting, and headaches. Despite the chilling narrative, the Wyoming incident has been confirmed to be an ARG, alternate reality game, and a creepypasta, designed to emulate the infamous Max Headroom broadcast signal intrusion of the 1980s. The video and the story surrounding it were purely fictional, created to entertain and spook viewers with an elaborate, unsettling tale. Owen Hayes' final video. This entry delves into the tragic and mysterious death of the South Korean actress and model, Owen Hay, who passed away in 2020 due to cardiac arrest, though many believe it was actually suicide. Her death is enveloped in controversy and speculation, partly fueled by her last YouTube video. Owen Hay gained significant media attention in 2011 for wearing a revealing dress to a public event, which many in the conservative Korean society criticized harshly. This backlash reportedly impacted her acting career, leading to offers of only degrading or low-profile roles. Discouraged, she turned to vlogging on YouTube. In her final video, posted two days before her death, several strange elements have sparked numerous theories. The video glitches from 48 seconds to 148, and despite editing her videos herself, she seemed unaware of the issue, leading some to believe it was deliberate. Oddly, she titled this video number 48, even though the previous one was number 45. Additionally, the video features mirrored clock hands showing 430, which translates to 830, adding to the number 48 motif. During the glitch, she appears to simulate a chopping motion at her neck with a comb, further unsettling viewers. These numerous references to the number 48, coupled with a mysterious Instagram post about being objectified by a former lover and his colleague, have led many to believe she was attempting to convey a message. The story becomes even more complex with allegations of her involvement in abusive relationships and the suit of a former lover. While some dismiss these as coincidences, others see a deeper, unresolved mystery surrounding Owen Hay's final days, making her last video a haunting entry in internet lore. Satoshi Nakamoto is the pseudonymous figure credited with the creation of Bitcoin, the first decentralized cryptocurrency. Nakamoto's identity remains one of the greatest mysteries in the tech and financial world. In 2008, Nakamoto published a white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, outlining the concept of a digital currency that operates on a decentralized ledger known as blockchain technology. The following year, Nakamoto released the first version of the Bitcoin software and mined the Genesis block, also known as Block Zero. Over the next few years, Nakamoto remained active in the Bitcoin community, 
communicating with other developers and contributing to the code base. However, in 2011, Nakamoto abruptly ceased all public activity, handing over control to other members of the community. Despite numerous attempts to unmask Nakamoto, their true identity has never been revealed. Speculation ranges from individual cryptography experts and computer scientists to groups of people working under a collective pseudonym. Some theories even suggest Nakamoto could be deceased. The mystery is compounded by the fact that Nakamoto is believed to hold approximately 1 million bitcoins, which, at their peak value, would make them one of the wealthiest individuals in the world. This anonymity and the immense financial implications have led to endless intrigue and speculation, cementing Satoshi Nakamoto's place as a central figure in the lore of cryptocurrency and the internet at large. Tyler's Last Words is a chilling internet mystery that surfaced from a YouTube video posted in 2011. The video purportedly shows a man named Tyler playing a song on his guitar dedicated to his late wife. According to the story, after recording the video, Tyler tragically took his own life, and his brother subsequently uploaded the video as part of Tyler's last wishes. The video ends with Tyler holding a gun to his head, though nothing graphic is shown. This disturbing narrative captivated many viewers, fueling speculation and concern. However, it was eventually debunked as a hoax. The man in the video is actually Austin Cross, a member of the band My Fair Fiend. At the time, the band had an album called Victoria, and the supposed backstory in the video's description matched this detail, claiming Tyler's late wife's name was Victoria. Further investigation confirmed that Austin Cross, who looks identical to the man in the video, was indeed the person featured, and the entire scenario was fabricated. Thus, Tyler's last words was revealed to be a piece of viral fiction rather than a tragic reality. Chip Chan is an internet mystery involving a South Korean woman who claims to be a victim of illegal surveillance and mind control. The story began in 2008 when users on a 4chan's board discovered a live webcam stream showing a woman living in a cluttered apartment. The woman, who came to be known as Chip Chan, was often seen sleeping for long periods in unusual positions and displaying erratic behavior. On her blog and various notes visible in the webcam feed, Chip Chan claimed that a corrupt police officer she referred to as P implanted a microchip in her eyebrow and a mind control device in her ankle. According to her, this chip allows him to monitor and control her actions remotely, causing her physical pain and forcing her to sleep for extended periods. She has shared detailed accounts of her ordeal, including scans of medical documents and x-rays. Due to her beliefs, Chip Chan set up cameras throughout her apartment and began live-streaming herself 24-7 for over a decade. Her intention was to use these cameras to help her audience monitor her apartment, providing evidence if and when P breaks in and proving that she isn't lying about his actions. While some believe she is genuinely a victim of a sinister plot, others think she might be suffering from delusions or a severe mental health condition. She stopped live streaming, but she still posts paranoid and bizarre videos on other platforms. 11BX1371 is an enigmatic internet mystery that emerged in 2015, captivating online communities and puzzle enthusiasts. The mystery began when a cryptic video was sent to YouTuber Parker Wright and later uploaded to various platforms. The video, filmed in a decrepit, abandoned building, features a figure wearing a plague doctor costume making bizarre hand gestures and movements. The audio is a cacophony of unsettling, high-pitched noises and static. Hidden within the video are numerous ciphers, codes, and puzzles that have puzzled viewers and cryptographers alike. These include binary codes, Morse code, and various other cryptographic elements that, when decoded, reveal ominous and disturbing messages. Some messages allude to bioterrorism, references to famous unsolved crimes, and apocalyptic predictions. The video's location was identified as Zofiowka Sanatorium, a former tuberculosis hospital in Poland, adding to the eerie atmosphere. Further adding to the intrigue, the name 11BX1371 itself appears to be a code, possibly related to the hexadecimal color code for a dark shade of blue, though its true significance remains unknown. Despite extensive analysis and speculation, the creator of the video has never been identified, and the true purpose behind it remains a mystery. Some theories suggest it is an elaborate hoax or art project, while others fear more sinister intentions. Clockman is an eerie internet mystery that originated from a short film aired during the Nickelodeon show Pinwheel in the late 1970s. 
Pinwheel, a separate children's program, occasionally featured various short films to fill breaks between segments. This particular short, which aired and then faded into obscurity, was brought back into public consciousness in 2012 when a user named Commander Santa posted online, seeking to identify and locate the mysterious video. Many dismissed it as a creepy pasta or a collective false memory. However, the search eventually revealed that the short film was real. The film was originally from the Czech Republic and was released in 1976. The film, a stop-motion animation, tells the story of a young girl who makes a deal with a wizard. When she fails to uphold her end of the bargain, the wizard emerges from a clock in her room and takes her away. She must then sow stars for the sky to be returned to her bed. The unsettling nature of the story, combined with its eerie animation style, contributed to the vivid yet slightly altered recollections people had of the short. Shima Luan refers to an internet mystery surrounding the sudden disappearance of a popular YouTube animator. Shima Luan was a well-loved figure in the animation community, known for her vibrant and engaging content. She was part of the YouTube channel Sleepy Cabin, a collaborative group of animators and voice actors. Shima regularly posted animations and participated in podcasts, building a dedicated fan base. In 2016, Shima Luan abruptly stopped posting new content, and all her social media accounts went silent. This sudden disappearance left her fans bewildered and concerned. Rumors and theories began to circulate, with some speculating that she might have faced personal issues, encountered safety threats, or decided to leave the internet entirely due to the pressures of maintaining an online presence. Despite numerous attempts by fans and fellow creators to reach out and uncover her whereabouts, no concrete information has surfaced. It's common knowledge that people she worked with know where she lives, what her name is, etc. But the lack of any official statement or update has turned this disappearance into a mystery, I suppose. The Mystery of Kate Yup. Next on the list is Kate Yup a mukbanger on YouTube known for consuming massive amounts of seafood. Her channel gained significant attention due to peculiar aspects of her videos. Kate always wore a mask, hiding her face, and communicated with her audience using captions rather than speaking. Viewers began to notice bruises and other injuries on her body, leading to speculation. Some captions seemed to contain hidden messages. In one video, letters spelling out help were capitalized. Kate also appeared to glance off screen frequently and voices could be heard urging her to eat faster. These oddities led many to believe she was being held captive and forced to create content for profit. Kate has periodically disappeared from the internet for extended periods, which is unusual for a YouTuber with such a large following and view count. Her last upload was on October 7, 2023, adding to the mystery. This story gained popularity due to an accompanying video that lent it some credibility. The tale describes a man who finds an abandoned computer and discovers a file named Barbie. The video shows a woman being interviewed in a white room, but there is no audio of her voice. As the video progresses, the woman appears increasingly distressed, and it's revealed that she has only one arm. The video then cuts to someone walking along train tracks towards a house. The man who found the computer recognizes the location from the video and decides to investigate. He discovers the house, which is abandoned and dilapidated, and upon entering, hears a creepy moan that frightens him so much that he flees without investigating further. However, the true story behind this video is different. The writer of the creepypasta created the narrative around an existing video they found online. The real footage features a woman known as Sharon, an amputee who lost her arm in a washing machine accident. She was being interviewed by Mike Rounds, who was known for interviewing amputees and sharing their stories. Sharon had no connection to the fictional story created around the video. Kenny Veach was a hiker and YouTuber who went missing in 2014 after venturing into a cave in Nevada. An avid hiker and explorer, Kenny claimed to have found a cave with an entrance shaped like a perfect capital M, which he later called the M Cave. This cave was reportedly near the Nellis Air Force Base, close to Area 51. Kenny described a strange experience at the cave. He said that as he approached and entered the cave, his body started vibrating, and he was overcome with an intense feeling of fear, prompting him to leave. After sharing this on YouTube, his audience urged him to return and explore further. In October 2014, Kenny attempted to find the cave again, but was unsuccessful. 
In November 2014, Kenny set out again, this time hiking near the Sheep Mountains. Although he wasn't specifically looking for the M Cave, he never returned from this trip. Kenny always informed his girlfriend of his whereabouts. So, when he failed to return, she reported him missing the next morning. Search and rescue teams found his cell phone in a vertical cave and his car a few miles away, but there was no sign of Kenny. His disappearance fueled many conspiracy theories. Some speculated that the government or entities controlling Area 51 might have made Kenny disappear because he found a cave leading to Area 51, possibly seeing things he wasn't supposed to see. These theories suggest he was either taken or killed to keep these secrets. However, Kenny's girlfriend later commented on the MK video, stating she believed Kenny went out to take his own life. She explained that he had been battling depression for many years. It's thought that he left his cell phone in a place where it could be found to prevent his body from being easily located. Additionally, Kenny had a habit of engaging in risky activities, such as playing with rattlesnakes, which could have led to an accidental death. This is the story of the Reddit user Yay Video Games. For a long time, their identity and actions were a huge mystery online, generating many videos and discussions. However, the mystery has since been solved, though the conclusion is quite tragic and sad. Yay Video Games was known as a typical Reddit user, but seemingly out of nowhere, they began posting the same bizarre phrase, Ubisoft goes Steamworks bye bye always on DRM. This user also created numerous accounts to spam these forums with similarly odd phrases, which baffled many people due to the sheer volume of comments. It seemed almost impossible, leading to various theories. Some thought it was a troll using automated tools, while others believed it was a bot hack. Eventually, it was discovered that the user behind these accounts was suffering from severe mental illness and physical pain due to chronic fatigue syndrome. This individual, Lyndon Weddle, was dealing with both depression and chronic pain which exacerbated each other. Sadly, in January 2015, it was revealed that Lyndon had passed away by suicide. A friend later explained that Lyndon's spamming was a form of humor and a coping mechanism for his mental illness. He enjoyed the mystery and the reaction it generated online, which provided him some entertainment. It wasn't a symptom of his illness, but rather a way to manage it. The Disappearance of Maura Murray Maura was a junior nursing student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst when she vanished on February 9, 2004, in New Hampshire, after crashing her car. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance are both bizarre and tragic, with no trace of her ever found. On that evening, Maura crashed her car into a ditch around 7.30 p.m. A witness saw her standing by the car and called the police, but by the time they arrived about 15 minutes later, Maura had disappeared. Despite extensive investigations and countless theories, her whereabouts remain unknown. Baby Monkey Hate Ring This topic is as unsettling as it sounds. It's a troubling phenomenon on YouTube where people create random videos and playlists focusing on baby monkeys being deliberately harmed. Please do not search for this. Kanye Quest 3030 is a bizarre tale that started with a video game released for Windows in 2013. The game features Kanye West, who while taking out the garbage, falls through a portal to the year 3030. The premise of the game, which follows Kanye battling other rappers to advance, isn't central to the mystery. Notably, Kanye West had no involvement in the game's creation and did not approve it, so he could potentially sue if he wanted to. The real intrigue began a few years after the game's release when someone posted on Pastebin about discovering a hidden feature. This player found that by typing the word Ascend to an NPC in the game, they were transported to a secret, darker part of the game. This hidden area suggested that the game was a recruitment tool for a cult or religion called Ascensionism. Many people made videos about this supposed cult connection, but it wasn't until 2022 that the mystery was fully unraveled. The YouTube channel Grouse House conducted a thorough investigation in a series called Finding Jesus. This underrated series finally revealed the truth. The game's creator, Clara Hope, made it as part of a school project and designed it as an alternate reality game. Ascensionism was not a real cult or religion, it was just part of the ARG. Clara likely posted the initial pastebin message to prompt interest and guide players towards the hidden aspects of the game. In summary, Kanye Quest 3030 was an elaborate ARG with no real cult behind it, crafted by Clara Hope for a school project, and the mystery was eventually solved thanks to dedicated investigation. 
John Lang's Mysterious Case John Lang was a local resident who took to the internet to expose alleged corruption within the Fresno Police Department. He claimed to have evidence of their questionable activities and shared this information online. While it's known that there have been multiple allegations of corruption within the Fresno Police Department, in John Lang's case, he wasn't revealing anything new. Most of his claims were already public knowledge. John believed that his efforts to expose the police led to him being stalked and harassed by them. To protect himself, he installed cameras around his home. He even posted a chilling message on Facebook predicting his own death, stating that if anything happened to him, the Fresno police would be responsible. Tragically, just days after this post, his house caught fire and John was found inside with multiple stab wounds. The autopsy concluded that these wounds were self-inflicted, leading to widespread speculation about a police cover-up. Many people believe that the police manipulated the autopsy results to hide their involvement in John's death. However, it's also possible that John Lang was suffering from mental illness, which could explain his paranoia and extreme measures. The Hitagata commercial refers to a piece of lost media from 2004 that first surfaced on a Japanese message board. This urban legend involves a commercial or PSA public service announcement that no one has been able to confirm or find any concrete evidence of its existence. According to the legend, the video features two white, featureless human figures against a dark black background, often remembered as being in front of railroad tracks. A voice in the video supposedly states, every two seconds someone dies on the earth. Next, we delve into the Horton Mine. About 10 years ago, this channel posted several videos claiming to have captured paranormal activity within the supposedly haunted Horton Mine. In these videos, the YouTuber showcased eerie phenomena such as water inexplicably flowing and chains swinging on their own. One particular video went viral, featuring a single chain moving mysteriously while the host expressed confusion over its motion. However, the supposed haunting was later debunked as a hoax. It was discovered that the unsettling sounds recorded in the mine were actually from stock audio clips, often used for Halloween effects. The evil stick is one of the most intriguing internet mysteries. In 2014, a woman bought a toy called the evil stick for her young child from a dollar store. The store's toy section was filled with stereotypical girl toys, mostly pink and princess themed. She picked up a wand that seemed to be just a harmless princess wand, featuring a button to play whimsical music and a small mirror in the center. The toy was cheap, and the mom thought her daughter would enjoy it. However, she didn't notice that the packaging labeled it as an evil stick. When her daughter played with the toy, she became very upset and scared, as it didn't play whimsical music but, but maniacal laughter instead. Even more disturbing was the image behind the reflective foil in the middle. When the foil was peeled off, it revealed a horrifying photo of a woman made to look like a vampire cutting her own The story made the news, and to this day, we don't know exactly how this toy ended up in stores. 4chan Alien Picture Next up is the infamous 4chan Alien Picture, an event that captivated the internet back in 2014. Here's the story. An anonymous user posted a high-resolution, clear photo of what appeared to be an alien on 4chan. The alien seemed to be standing in an Arizona-like desert landscape. The post included exact coordinates of the location where the alien was allegedly spotted. Within minutes of this photo being posted, all of 4chan went down. When the site came back up, the post, the thread, and the photo were nowhere to be found, completely wiped from the internet. Naturally, this led to widespread speculation and excitement. Many believed that the photo was real, and that 4chan had been deliberately shut down to prevent the image from spreading. Despite the swift deletion, a few users managed to save the photo, although it was somewhat distorted due to the rushed saving process. However, this intriguing story was soon debunked. The photo was revealed to be a hoax, a clever Photoshop job using an alien from the X-Files movie superimposed onto a real Arizona background. The original sources for both the alien and the background were quickly identified. The Sakhalin Island Seawolf this peculiar tale began when Russian soldiers discovered a large, strange carcass on the shore of Sakhalin Island in Russia. For a time, the remains were thought to be evidence of a cryptid, a mysterious creature dubbed the Sea Wolf. However, further examination by experts revealed that the carcass was actually that of a beluga whale. While some cryptid enthusiasts still argue that labeling it a beluga whale is a cover-up, 
the scientific consensus is clear. The remains are consistent with those of a beluga whale, and marine biologists are confident in this identification. Despite lingering doubts among some, this mystery has been effectively solved, leaving the sea wolf as a fascinating but debunked legend. In 2011, a YouTube video titled, You Have 30 Days to Pay Me 5 Million was posted by a channel named Now I Know. The original video is no longer available as it has been made private, but it stirred quite a bit of intrigue and speculation when it was accessible. The video begins with someone assembling a remote-controlled car equipped with a camera. The presumed uploader, likely a man, documents his journey, showing footage of traveling on an airplane and eventually arriving at the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. He purportedly uses the RC car to explore inside the pyramid, but the video cuts off abruptly with glitches before revealing anything significant. The uploader's claim was that they discovered something incredibly secretive or disturbing inside the pyramid. They threatened to release the full video unless they were paid $5 million, presumably by the Egyptian government. Despite the threat, nothing notable happened, and after 30 days, the complete video was released. The full video turned out to be anticlimactic. It showed the RC car entering a room, revealing a few frames of a vague figure possibly in front of a light or window. The video concluded with text stating the uploader had failed to gather more information, but hinted at potential secrets within the pyramid. In conclusion, while the identity and motives of the uploader remain unknown, the consensus is that the video was an elaborate hoax, rather than a genuine blackmail attempt or revelation of hidden secrets within the Great Pyramid. Red Rooms Red Rooms are a particularly unsettling concept rumored to exist on the dark web. They are said to be live-streamed videos, where viewers can watch victims being torn and killed in real time. Supposedly, these live streams occur in rooms illuminated by red lights, hence the name Red Rooms. Viewers are often believed to have the ability to pay the host to carry out specific acts of torture or abuse on the victims. Despite the widespread rumors and terrifying tales, there is no concrete evidence that Red Rooms actually exist. The technical limitations of the dark web make it highly unlikely to support the live streaming of high-quality video, let alone interactive broadcasts where viewers can make real-time requests. Discovery of Paris Catacombs Footage Next on the list is the mysterious found footage from the Paris catacombs. This tape reportedly surfaced after a man ventured into the forbidden sections of the catacombs in the 1990s. He filmed his journey through the subterranean labyrinth, but mysteriously disappeared afterward. In the video, his breathing quickens, hinting at growing fear. Eventually, the camera is dropped and the man is never seen again. Despite searches, neither he nor his body has ever been found. This footage was discovered by cataphiles, enthusiasts who explore the off-limits parts of the catacombs. They stumbled upon the tape and eventually gave it to filmmaker Francis Freeland, who featured it on ABC Family's Scariest Places on Earth. For those unfamiliar, the Paris catacombs stretch over 200 miles beneath the city and house the remains of millions of people. Only a small portion is open to the public for guided tours, making it unsurprising that someone could easily get lost in the vast network. The Mystery of Jeff the Killer's Original Image The haunting image of Jeff the Killer is a heavily photoshopped picture that has become iconic in the creepypasta community. Despite its widespread recognition, the original source of this image remains unknown. The internet has been abuzz for years with attempts to trace its origins, with entire Reddit communities dedicated to unraveling this mystery. These online sleuths have compiled extensive research documents, but so far, no one has definitively identified the unaltered photo. There are two main images often associated with Jeff the Killer, both heavily edited to achieve their eerie effect. Despite extensive investigation, no one has come forward to claim responsibility for creating the image, nor has the original, unedited photo been identified. Ruth Price 911 Call Next up is the story of Ruth Price, which until recently was shrouded in mystery. This refers to the infamous Ruth Price 911 call, a recording that has both terrified and intrigued many people. Ruth Price was an elderly woman who called what sounded like 911 to report a suspicious person in her neighborhood. She mentioned that the person had knocked on her door, giving her an uneasy feeling, prompting her to contact the police. During the call, you can hear her speaking with the dispatcher, but suddenly, there's a blood-curdling scream and sounds of a struggle. 
This led many to believe that Ruth was attacked and possibly killed during the call. In 2022, a Reddit user finally uncovered the truth. They tracked down a newspaper article from that period confirming that Ruth Price was indeed attacked during the call, but she survived the ordeal. The article matched her name, address, and the dates perfectly. The reality was that Ruth was indeed attacked, and her scream was genuine. However, she managed to fend off her attacker, who then fled the scene. The call took place in 1980, in San Diego, before the 911 system was in place there, which explains why it wasn't technically a 911 call, but a direct call to the police department. Ruth Price lived another 14 years, passing away in 1994. Well, I live the next mystery is the website known as Laughing Horses Orifice Headquarters, often abbreviated as LHOHQ. This site is a bizarre mix of conspiracy theories, anti-government and anti-politician messages, and cult-like connections. Some people believe LHOHQ is simply an alternate reality game, designed to puzzle and entertain those who enjoy such enigmas. The website is filled with strange and unsettling content. If you decide to visit it, be warned that it contains flashing lights and chaotic visuals, which can be harmful if you have photosensitivity or epilepsy. LHOHQ continues to intrigue and confuse those who stumble upon it, contributing to its reputation as a peculiar corner of the internet. The Calls from Charles Peck One of the most bizarre and unsettling stories is that of Charles Peck. In September 2008, a commuter train collided with a freight train in California. The crash was caused by the commuter train's engineer texting, resulting in 135 injuries and 25 fatalities, including 49-year-old Charles Peck who died instantly upon impact. However, for 11 hours following the crash, Charles's cell phone made 35 calls to his loved ones, his son, fiancé, brother, stepmother and sister. Each time when they answered, they only heard static and calls back to his number went straight to voicemail. 12 hours after the crash and an hour after the calls ceased, first responders discovered Charles's body in the wreckage, but his phone was never found. This incident devastated his family, who believed he might have been alive and trying to reach out for help. The eerie nature of the calls led many to speculate that Charles's ghost was responsible for contacting his loved ones. Several explanations have been proposed to demystify these calls. One theory suggests the calls were accidental butt dials, but this was dismissed since his phone was never recovered. Another theory posits that someone with ill intentions might have stolen his phone from the wreckage and made the calls, though it seems unlikely they would call his family members repeatedly. Some also theorize that a fellow crash survivor might have used his phone to notify his family, but this theory also raises questions such as why the person wouldn't ask for help instead. The most plausible explanation might be a technical malfunction. It's possible the phone was severely damaged during the crash and began malfunctioning, repeatedly calling numbers saved in a favorites list. This could explain the static heard on the other end and the lack of response. The phone might have been thrown far from Charles during the impact and subsequently lost or destroyed, explaining why it was never recovered. While the paranormal explanation captures the imagination, the malfunction theory seems the most feasible, suggesting a tragic coincidence rather than a supernatural event. Strange sounds from 96.7 FM from October 17 to the summer of 2018, a local radio station in Portland, Oregon, 96.7 FM, baffled listeners with a series of strange sounds. Starting in August 2017, the station broadcasted bizarre beeping noises, distorted audio, static, snippets of speeches by JFK and MLK, sounds from the Apollo 11 mission, and the Sputnik transmission. Some listeners even reported hearing distorted music and segments of Lou Reed songs. This odd broadcast phenomenon piqued public interest. The mystery was eventually solved. It was discovered that 96.7 FM had recently been licensed by the Community Alliance of Tenants, CAT, a nonprofit organization. The station's controllers were likely engaging in a practice known as stunting, Stunting is a tactic used by radio stations when they are about to change formats or undergo new management. They play unusual audio loops and sounds to attract attention and create buzz. This strategy worked, generating significant local and online discussion. As intended, it drew more listeners to the station, which began regular broadcasts later in 2018. 
Mariana's Web Mariana's Web is often mentioned in discussions about the hidden depths of the internet, particularly in the context of internet mysteries and the iceberg chart that illustrates different layers of the web. The chart starts with the easily accessible surface web and delves into the more mysterious and often misunderstood Mariana's Web at the very bottom. Here's a breakdown of the myth. Surface Web This is the part of the internet that includes everything you can find easily through search engines like Google, public websites, articles, and social media. Deep Web Beneath the surface web lies the deep web, which consists of all the content not indexed by standard search engines. This includes private and secure sites like online banking portals and personal email accounts. Accessing these sites typically requires specific credentials or direct links, but they are not inherently illegal. Dark Web The dark web is a subset of the deep web that requires special software like Tor to access. It's notorious for illegal activities such as drug trafficking, weapons trading, and other illicit services, though not everything on the dark web is illegal. Mariana's web is said to contain the most secretive and potentially dangerous information, including government secrets and proof of extraterrestrial life. This is purportedly the deepest part of the internet beyond the dark web. According to the myth, accessing Mariana's web would require a quantum computer and solving complex puzzles. Oct28.2011.com Oct28.2011.com, presumably referring to October 28, 2011, was a peculiar website that has since disappeared. While the site is no longer accessible, it garnered attention for its strange and unsettling content, leading many to believe it was an alternate reality game, ARG, or a cult recruitment page, though it was likely the former. The website featured eerie text and bizarre imagery, but it became most infamous for listing a phone number that visitors could call. Those who dialed the number reported experiencing unsettling sounds on the other end. Some described hearing weird breathing noises, while others heard what sounded like objects being moved across the floor or loud beeps. Overall, Oct28.2011.com seems to have been a project created by someone looking to intrigue or frighten internet users. Its combination of cryptic content and creepy phone calls fits the pattern of many other internet mysteries. This entry refers to this enigmatic website, and honestly, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I won't even try. The site has been around for quite some time and even has its own subreddit, though this community has been inactive for several years. When you first visit the site, you're met with an eerie ambiance. Clicking around, you eventually stumble upon hidden links that lead you deeper into the unsettling content. These hidden links can be almost anything, a tiny corner of an image or a random letter amidst a sea of words. It's estimated that the website contains over 1,000 pages and links, each leading to new cryptic imagery. The website goes beyond cryptic text and pictures. It includes various math problems, many of which are convoluted and revolve around the number 9. If you delve deep enough, you'll discover an active forum. Some internet sleuths have noted that the forum members can be condescending to new visitors. This behavior has sparked speculation about whether the website could be a secret cult or if it's just a far-fetched guess. The domain owner is David Dennison, an artist based in the UK. His older works reveal a penchant for surrealism. With this information, it's possible that the website is simply an elaborate art project.